Hey everyone. Um, so first of all, I'd like to start off by saying that this gun guide is a, you know, is I, I, I pretty much mean guns. Like guns are my, in fact, like best weapon near enough. You know, when I play them, like on a good, on good days, my, my blasters are definitely my best weapon, and they feel the most controlling as well. Like you know what I mean. Scythe is one of those weapons that I'm just going to be like, uh, I'm giving this as an example. You know when you play Scythe and you get all those dodge reads? Like, so when you play Scythe, like, really well, it feels like you're on top of the world. That's how I feel with guns. I get the same feeling when I play really, really well with guns. Like, guns are really underrated for, like, how fun they can be when you're good with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you actually really, really get good with them, um, the, the weapon is so, so much fun to use. So, yeah, this is just the intro on, basically, this is going to be a pretty decently long gun guide, and I hope you guys uh, stay here for the ride, and uh, I hope you do, um, I hope you, you know, watch the entire video, and if you're trying to learn guns, then this should help you, and I hope to do the best to achieve that, so, yeah, enjoy the video. Okay, in this section, I'm going to be going over every single Blaster Legends, and, you know, their strengths, weaknesses, and stuff like that. Well, you know, I'll try my best to anyway. Um, I don't really have, like, a set script for this, so, you know, I'll do what I can. So, first of all, you have Cassidy. Cassidy's a, a decent character, don't get me wrong. Like, her SIGs are really, really nice, especially on Hammer. On Guns, her SIGs aren't really the strong point. I'll be really honest with you. Like, Cassidy's definitely fallen um, from the spot of a Blaster's Legend. Um, she has a good hammer, don't get me wrong, but the problem with hammer is it struggles insanely a lot with guitars, sword, and the weapons that are pretty much at the meta right now. Hammer's just insanely difficult to play. They've guided the weapon, in my opinion. Like, it's usable, but they've pretty much guided it compared to every other weapon. Like, every other weapon just dominates the hammer at this point. Um, guns. This is the, the problem with guns is, again, bad matchups against guitars, swords, just things like that, especially like, um, I think it has a good matchup in a great sword. Like, that's what I've noticed since, since playing, um, is guns definitely do a really, really good job at spacing out a uh, great sword, which is really, really nice. Because uh, Nyx is pretty much a counterpick to a great sword legend that I play against, so yeah. Um, I, yeah, I just love Nyx. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, this character is it's decent, you know, you can use this character, like, she's the, one of the coolest looking characters in my opinion, I just love this legend, but just not not in the right meta for right now for her, like, she's kind of fallen down quite a bit over the years, but yeah, she's still usable, you know, by the way, never be discouraged, I'm going to start off by saying never be discouraged to use any legend that you want, like, just because I'm saying uh, something, oh, this is bad, like, everything is usable. If you're good with a legend, you'll do well. Like, no matter, how, no matter how, how far it goes. Like, legends don't even matter until, like, top 8 anyway, so, like, really don't pay attention to it. Um, people would put way too much emphasis on, like, what the best character is. Uh, yeah, other than that, she has, like, she has, like, high strength, which is nice, but a high dex, slow speed, low defense, it's kind of a sussy-wussy little thing, you know? Uh, a little bit speed is necessary in this manner like it's you can and by the way like I just said you can get good with any legend so you can get used to low speed but most people don't pick low speed so you do you do what you want right anyway yeah just too high decks in my opinion um, but the high decks definitely helps with hammer so uh, very very good legend like I will be real like this is one of the characters that's really really good with decks because of his signatures like his signatures are really bonkers when used properly like really nuts apart from his gun sigs it's, like blasters d sig and side sig is really good but um and sig isn't the strongest so uh I'm making sure I'm not, I don't want to miss any uh thatch thatch is a really underrated blast legend he's like sort of like a glass cannon um Thatch is one of those glass cannons, but does have sword, so it's like a really, really good secondary, you know what I mean? Really simple, easy to use if you're struggling. Like, if you're struggling in a matchup, and you, at least then you have a sword to back it up, you know what I mean? Like, just an easy, easy thing to pick up. So, yeah, at least at least that's like the bonus of it. Um, other than that, Thatch is a very, very good legend. Extremely strong underrated SIGs. Um, not used very much, like... To his full potential, like he, he's never really used, sadly, because he is a very, very good legend, and uh, in the right hands, this dude could be deadly. Okay, so there's your glass cannon, Ada. Ada's another one of those glass cannons. I think she has too high decks, personally. 
there's no need for decks on spear to be honest. Like you don't really need it. Three to four decks is fine on spear. Guns you don't really need decks. Like three to four again. She does have high strength. She has pretty decent signatures overall. She has at least a decent bit of speed, which is nice. So again, she's sort of like a glass dex cannon. You know what I mean in a way. Lucian is a tank, like a tanky one. You know what I mean, and a speedster. You know what I mean. You can go up to nine speed with this legend, and even go up to seven defense, which is really nice. Like Lucian barely ever dies. Really, really cool. Um, has guitars, which is really meta right now. Guitars are doing pretty well. Uh, so obviously he has like the best uh guitar kit in the game. I'm pretty sure. Like in my opinion, anyway. Like I just really, really love this legend, especially since they buffed down sick as well. <laughs> Why they did, I don't know. It was fine, but yeah. Anyway. This is your glass cannon. The only issue with Lucian is struggling to kill. Uh, Lucian definitely struggles to kill. If you can't find that kill confirm, you're kind of screwed. You know what I mean? Uh, the only real option you have is Katar, like recovery, um, or like say, or then like gun say, or maybe even recovery again. But yeah, you're not really gonna find very much unless you hit down like recovery. So that's kind of it's kind of sad. But if you do well, he's an amazing character and feels really good to play. Um, Barraza has a really good easy secondary. He's definitely a really good tank. Um, you know what I mean? Like, he's got some really beefy defense. This dude is hard to kill sometimes. Extremely hard to kill. Like, he lasts a long time. Especially if you go up to, like, 9 defense. That shit is crazy. A little bit slow, but if you get used to it, really, really cool signatures too. So, his signatures have always been really, really good. Just, um, quite underused, honestly. Barraza's not a very used character. Um, but as you can see, Cody Travis can can make him look like an absolute god. You know what I mean? So don't be discouraged to use him. You know what I mean? Definitely use him if you want to. Uh, yeah. Other than that, pretty good sigs overall. Good legend. Um, uh, Laura Cross. Uh, sorry, Diana. Jesus. Diana's a very good legend, but the problem is she can also she's also one of those things that if you don't hit a sig you're kind of going to be struggling to kill for a while and that's the sad part about her is like she doesn't really have much of a kill option you know what i mean the only thing you can really hit is downlight recovery on guns and then downlight recovery on bow or maybe a nair you know what i mean like or hit a signature that's all but if they're avoiding it really well it's really difficult to kill with diana she is a very difficult legend to play um but other than that, like, the SIGs really do complement each other, and her stats are amazing. Like, her stats are so nicely balanced. I love these type of stats, where it's, like, 5-5-5, five, 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 and then it has, like, a really good speed stance, you know what I mean? Like, that's really, really cool to me. I love that. Uh, yeah. So, overall, a really good legend. Cross is basically, like, a beefy boy, you know what I mean? This dude can kill you very, very quickly, and blast blasters on cross will build up so much damage. Cross has like really, really underrated signatures, even though he was nerfed on his end sig on gauntlets. He still has some of the hardest hitting sigs in the game. He still does really, really well when played right, I think. Gauntlets are the strongest weapon in the game right now, along with guns being very, very decent, to be honest. Like, they're in a decent spot. They could do with some small tweaks, and we're wrong. I, th I think N Light needs a buff. Like, really badly, I think it, the move needs to be sped up. It would balance it in twos, and then it would also make it useful in ones, you know what I mean? Because the problem in ones is you hit an end light on guns, and by the time you've hit... Like, you could catch a dodge with end light, but by the time end light's over, they already have their dodge back. Like, it's really annoying, because they touch the ground slightly when you're doing the end light. So, it's, yeah, it's really dumb. They need to speed up the move. Uh, other than that, yeah, I think it's really good. I think Cross is just such a good, good, fun legend, especially with this crossover as well, dude. Jesus Christ, the SIGs are broken. Uh, Nyx. Nyx is my bae. Um, I love Nyx, like, so much. Nyx is, like, such a fun character, dude. This this character, the stats are crazy for the weapons. Um, she's very difficult to play. Like, again, she struggles with killing. Like, if you don't hit the SIGs, you're kind of screwed. So... Scythe Ensig is also one of the best things at killing, like, it's literally pre-patch Mordex Ensig, you know what I mean, like, what it used to be, like, it kills that early, it's really, really good, um, obviously you have Blaster Sig, so crazy, you have Downlight into Ensig if they don't have a dodge, which is cracked, that kills at, like, 100 damage, dude, it's, it's really insane, like, she, she has some cheesy things about it, but she's hard to play, but the problem is, like, she's really cheesy that it makes you wonder, like, if she's actually difficult, but she
she definitely is a top level player. She like everyone knows how good Nyx is, but she's just hard to play. That's literally all it is about her. Um, but other than that, the stats are just crazy. Like you can you can go five force, five dex into uh, six speed and six uh, yeah six speed and six defense, or you can have seven speed, seven defense, four attack, four dex. Like that is cracked. It's so nice. It feels so good. She never dies, dude. Like this legend is really, really fun. Uh, gotta keep making sure. Yeah, Isaiah. Isaiah is pretty weak against some legends. Like definitely sword guitars, golden loads. Like it, it struggles because he can struggle to kill sometimes. But luckily he has gun Ensig, which is really good at covering the weakness of guns. Like really, really good. Um, other than that, his sigs are quite underrated. Like, honestly, his two down sigs are amazing. His side sig on guns is really, really good. End sig is really good on both weapons. Like, his sig kit overall is really underrated and not very used very much. His stats, like, aren't insane, but they're definitely the defense does help. So, you know, I can't really complain. And plus, you can go up to five speed, and you don't really need, like high strength like if he struggles to kill at least you have gun and sig and downlight near on uh cannon and stuff like that which is so that'll kill anyway so you're all good you should be fine but he's just a decently hard legend to use sometimes uh so next blast this legend is reno right that's, i'm not missing one right yeah i think that's the last one we haven't really we really got many which is sad um yeah Reno, Reno is a very underrated legend. Like the Sigs are amazing. I don't think the stats are the best, but I think Reno is probably like the, probably like the best feeling orb character, like close to being like Ezio. You know what I mean? Like the, the Sigs and everything, really really fun. Um, I just like this art style. Like he sort of reminds me, like in his base skin, he sort of reminds me of one of those things from Star Wars. Like you already know what I'm talking about, right? I just find it funny. <laughs> it's really funny to me. Um, other than that, like, you can go up to five, uh, you know, five strength, you got a good six, uh, six dex, six defense, and then five speed, or you can even just go down to three speed, you can go to three speed because you don't really need it, like, you do sort of have the, the, the dex and the sigs to pull it off, if you do well with them, and Cody Travis has played this character, by the way, so, definitely in the running, like, he's definitely strong, like, he's really, really usable. Plus his, his skins are actually quite cool. I gotta be honest, this, this one's ugly as shit, but I do I do like both of his skins. I think yeah, that is the last one. Um, so yeah, that's all the legends that you can pick from. So strings and combos that you need to know. Um, you have oh, sorry, downlight dash jump dare, downlight sidelight. Uh, sorry, yeah. Say into end light. Say end light nay. Oh, sorry, expert in there. There you go. Uh, then you have. Sorry. Yeah, I just shipped that one. And then. Okay. Which is then, I'm just gonna quickly go over that because that's a little bit more complicated. I mean, if you don't know, so basically, say, de, GC downlight, then dash like basically yeah, dash forward into recovery. Okay. Uh, then you have like things like de. Give me a second. Yeah, then you and then you have de, and then you have GC D light. Into. Chase dodge reverse near. It's like an X pivot. Uh, if you don't know how to do X pivots, I will be doing a tutorial, in, like maybe in another video. But it's there are plenty of tutorials you can find one. I might add one. All right, all right, I will add one. Okay, forget scrap what I just said. I will add one for you. So yeah, you can do say and like X pivot near. Um, you got things like that, which is you go into downlight. Dash jump there, GC end light, and then you can go into a near if you wanted to after that. So, Jesus, sorry, I keep pressing the wrong button. Sorry. There you go. It's a very good damage build up. You know, 
Things like that. You, you get the gist. Alright, so those are the basic strings of combos, you know, like downlight say. Uh, then you have like downlight near, uh, sorry, downlight and light at low damage. Um, at like higher damages, you can do. Uh, if my brain wasn't stupid. Hello? Brain? You have that, which is basically you downlight. You jump, dash forward, into reverse near. Um, it's very good for juggling, anyway, so yeah. Uh, yeah, other than that, those are just like the basic strings and combos that you probably need to know. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, yeah, on to the next section. So this is the part where I'm going to sort of teach you X-Pivoting, that's why I said cancel all what I said, because I may as well teach you, it. it's very, pretty simple overall to do. Um, so for example, right, I'm going to go for an end light, and I'm going to X-Pivot near. Now, the way you do this is essentially, you can see on the keyboard, um, WSD to move, I'm showing the key binds on it, jump, spacebar, and then my light attack is left arrow, heavy attack, right arrow, throw is um, just the up arrow, so... Just want to let you know my uh, controls there. Oh yeah, shift to dodge them. Okay, so when I go for the end light, what I'm doing is I I do this. I dash up. So for example, I like after the end light, I dash diagonally up towards the opponent. Okay, so do that like 20 times and practice that. Just keep practicing that and try practice it in both directions. By the way, don't just practice it in one. You get what I mean? Yeah. So, after you do that, basically what you're doing, you're reversing, you're inputting a near, but you just reverse it. So stand still and just do this. Reverse the opposite direction. So stand still facing one direction, and then just do the reverse near. So walk forward, reverse near. Reverse near. Reverse now. Like, I'm not pressing any other key, by the way. I'm not like inputting another, like another thing. I'm just walking. Reverse name. That's it. That's all you're doing. Very, it's very simple to do. So after you got that down, you're going to dash and do the reverse near essentially. Okay. Now this works after another string as well. So after you do side light, you can. Oops, sorry, I can do this through there. You can do this after hitting the side light. So you can do down light, side light, into reverse um, X pivot near. If my brain would stop doing that. Uh, hello? Question mark? But why am I back dashing? Alright, thank you. Um, yeah, you get the gist though. It, it's very awkward timing. You need to start getting like the timings down. But other than that, it's very important to know because Nair is a very good damage builder when you know how to use it, right? Which I'll go on to in like further sections. So, another thing that you can do for the X pivots is sort of like dash, dash jump. So practice dash jumping. If you haven't, I have a movement guide on like how to do all this stuff and like movement tech and stuff. I have like a full guide that you can go watch. Um, other than that, you dash and reverse the near, but you're inputting down. Like, does that make sense? So you dash, hold down, dash, hold down, dash, hold down, dash, hold down. But make sure to reverse yourself whenever and get like into the mood, like the groove of this. Just like reverse yourself whenever you like input. It. See how I'm holding the other direction on the keyboard whenever I dash jump? Like that? When I'm turning? Like that? That's essentially what you're doing, but you input a near. So, this is gonna be important. No, not like that. That's how you hit a uh, like low grounded th X pivot, you know what I mean? It's like. It's uh, it's really useful for a lot of strings. Like you'd be surprised, this can be used for a lot of weapons. You know what I mean? So.
So I recommend learning it anyway, because you, you need to get the concept down of what it is. So yeah, and then you can also like, you know, dash jump, reverse, sear and stuff like that. But yeah, you understand my point anyway. Um, if you need like help on it, then I'm I'm happy to help you on it. You know what I mean? Just like comment down below if you're really struggling with it, and I can even help you in game if you're on PC. So I can I can even help you on console, but the problem is I'm not gonna be able to show you as well because I'm gonna have to use a controller and I just use the board. So, uh, but I'll try my best. Okay. So yeah, that's it for this section. On to the next. So the purpose of guns. Um, isn't really like many other weapons, you know what I mean? It's not like, it's not exactly like other weapons, you know what I mean? Like, the, the, the entire point of other weapons is to mainly like stay close. With guns, the, the whole point is spacing yourself from said opponent. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's like how like, uh, guns are like the only weapon that do that, is where you have to actually space yourself. I, I, am I just stupid? Yeah, probably. Anyway, um, like guns are pretty much the only weapon that requires you to actually stay at a distance and requires the, you to really space your stuff out. Like, before you learn guns, you really need to really understand that guns are very, very difficult to use. Like, it, especially at top level play, guns are just extremely difficult to use because of the dead zones, what we call dead zones, which is the space in between the hitbox and the player, right? This is what you need to really get good at with guns, and learning spacing is the most important on guns, uh, because one miss and you could be punished heavily for it. You know what I mean? A lot of the time, um, like if if you if they know what they're doing, guns are very easily punishable. So this is the problem that you're gonna have. Uh, you you have to learn to push your opponent out of their comfort zone instead, and keep the opponent at a distance, which is, you know, your main tools, right? So, you, you know, you have your main tools for, like, spacing with, um, you know, near, say, uh, you know, downlight and stuff, you have, like, you know, your, you know, your dash D-light, uh, sorry, dash side light becomes, like, half the stage. You have to keep your opponent at bay, but also keep pressure, if you don't understand what I'm saying. So, you... So, I don't really know a way to, I can explain this in like real detail, but that's like the gist of it, right? You just gotta really get good with spacing with guns. So, by spacing with guns, I mean don't sit right here because you, and try to save them. It, nothing is gonna happen. You know what I mean? Like this is the dead zone of uh, guns. You know, you can't hit them in there, like, because near hit hits quite far up, right? Like, you have this entire box dead zone. You know? There, there's a good tool, don't get me wrong. But if you don't hit it, like, you know, it's not the end of the world, but, like, if you don't hit a lot of guns, you're definitely going to get punished for it. There's this big box is dead zone. This right here. This is your dead zone. And you need to keep players out of this zone. Going for a GC D light occasionally works, but it, that, that's a long punish, especially with characters like, you know, uh, sorry, with weapons like Spear, where they, if, if you miss and they get that punish on you, that's 80 damage. That's half of your HP, pretty much, until kill percent. Y you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's, it's very risky to throw that, that thing out willy-nilly. Um, you can't just do random GCs to cover yourself, like, close. It just isn't gonna work, and you know, and like again, it's just again one of those moves that just it doesn't hit close. Nay, say you know, nay say doesn't do, do anything. Your side light doesn't doesn't hit close. Nay, end light doesn't hit close, even though it's relatively close. You know what I mean? Like hits the probably the closest out of out of pretty much every attack it has, but still, um, you, you need to rely on actually pushing your opponent away and keeping them at bay. Uh, just from your says and your nays and stuff like that, so yeah. I've said this in many of my guides, but you need to really, really learn and drill it into your head that you need to use movement to approach rather than attacks. Brawl Hall isn't actually about attacking. It's about movement and baiting out attacks so you can punish said attack. 
it, it's not like you know I, I get that it's a fighting game but all of the time you, you yeah attacking just puts you in a disadvantage for the most part unless you do have a firm read on where your opponent is going to go uh, but I highly doubt that because there's so many options the like, play can go is just dumb anyway yeah so the main thing that you're going to have to realize with that is just buffing up your movement speed up everything move your movement you know move up sorry no, that makes no sense move up your movement speed up your movement you know what I'm saying um, that's the biggest thing that you're going to have to work on for guns because guns needs this guns you need you need movement you know what I mean? So yeah. Just keep this in mind. Because it's the most important. Now, this goes for like pretty much every single weapon in the game. But something that you really need to do is focus on using movement to approach. Like I said in, in the, in the uh, movement thing part. But one thing that you really need to start using is um, platforms. Um, get like used to using platforms, especially with guns. Uh, because guns, like this shit, is important. You know what I mean? Especially if you have a platform, just use it as well as you can. You know what I mean? Like that. Okay, so I'll give you a few examples. So maybe one time you dash in, you jump off. Then another time you dash in, you dash twice, jump off. Like mix up your movement in every single way. And it's just good to practice because it'll like try and make you, it'll try and force you to mix up your options even while in game. You know what I'm saying? So get used to movement, especially for guns, because guns need it more than anything. You know what I mean? So guns can't really rely on throwing out random hits and not being punished for it. So yeah. So just make sure to uh, just spice up your movement. You know what I'm saying? You know, and you, like, say the opponent's on the ground, and I'll give you an example. Um, okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. I have to place the bot a little bit here, you know what I'm saying? So, say the bot's below me, and I'm gonna set you to reset on. Okay, so say the bot's below me, right? There you go. Sorry, that's not what I meant to do. Standing on the edge will cause you to, like, do a really fast one, you know? Uh, which is really cool because you can push players away without like realizing it um, It's a really good thing to use with pretty much like all weapons any like side air works really well um, It's good for just like when you're like too Too scared to do something boom line up the edge and try doing that I mean it's hard to do in game, but you will get used to it even just a normal dash off will work You know if you get the timing right um, it's just when you do it on the ledge, you like jump off like really quick. Like, you know, if you just press dash, it, it like pushes you really far. You know what I mean? If I just dash normally, you know, I'm not really going play, I'm not really going very far, but if I do this, it's pushing me further. You know what I'm saying? So try using that in game. You'll get used to the timing, but yeah, other than that, uh, it's pretty much it. So this section is specifically for gold gun players, because <laughs> and plat gun players. Often times, a lot of people with guns just overuse every move. And what I mean by this is specifically dare. Okay, like we all know it. Whenever they're below, whenever someone's below you, you dare. Now I understand it to a certain degree. I do it sometimes, so like a little bit panicky and I'm not paying attention. But cut that out of your gameplay. Cut out the anegic reaction of when someone below you to automatically just do this. Because oftentimes it will not work, okay? It won't work, and you'll get punished for it. It oftentimes you are going to get severely punished for it by if whenever you're on top of someone, some you're just going to do this. People will punish at you very, very fast as well when they start noticing you're doing it even more than twice. They're like, ah, oh, all right, he's just one of those players. Okay, you're going to get countered. Okay, maybe not in gold, maybe not even plat, but when you start going higher up the ranks, people are going to start punishing that crap, man. And people are improving this game at a significant rate, you know, back in like 2016 people were trash Even 2018 people were trash 2020 people were pretty trash now people are getting to the point where like everyone's improving to like an Exponential degree like an astronomically different level than what we were at uh, In like 2016 so just keep this in mind that you're going to need to fully 
um, stop doing these bad habits because they will get you killed, especially like with guns. Guns are just, yeah, you know. So, I've talked about dare, right? And how people, generally speaking, spam dare all when they're in like sticky situations. The same exact thing goes for the seer. Like, you need to stop doing this when you're in a panicky situation. Because oftentimes, when they're falling down, like when players are falling down, they'll do this to like cut, try and cover themselves. And oftentimes, it's gonna get you punished. It's a really bad mistake that you need to get rid of because it will screw you up like 90% of the time. You know what I mean? Like, it, especially if you're doing it all the time, boom. Like, a sword player is literally just like, okay, no worries. Like, just dashed in by the point of you doing the set. Like, it'll completely miss. And I'll give you an example. Like, this. By the time this has happened, Dusk has already came in and sidelight saved me on all. You know what I'm saying? Like, that type of shit. So, just stop doing it. Okay? That is the, uh, that, that's the tip. Yep. So first of all, we're gonna go into um, Enlight. Enlight is a very good setup tool, but it, it's not the best move that you have in your kit. So you really need to um, you really need to hone down on using it too much because a lot of people do use like Enlight just too commonly, uh, and especially like I said, the box hitbox, you know, the the box spacing. You don't really have anything to cover that, so throwing out a near won't help you. Um, Sorry, and end light. Um, so yeah, use end light very sparingly. End light can be used as a very good setup tool. So for example, if they don't have a dodge or something like that, you know, you, you can hit near. And I'll talk about near later on, but you know what I mean. Um, end light is a good setup tool, but use it as a punish tool rather than a actual like engagement because just doing this randomly on stage oftentimes will get you punished. It, it oftentimes it looks like really quick, right? It looks really quick, but you will get punished for it, I promise you. Um, so yeah, keep it out of your um, mind just to constantly, like every time you whiff an attack, just doing this, or even just spamming D-Light, which I'll go into later. Okay, so downlight is a move that again, like I said earlier, is used very commonly, and it needs to be used a bit more uncommonly. Uh, it should specifically be only used for grounded punishes, and if you have a read, maybe go for a, a GC downlight. You know, because off top stage, which I'll show you on later, um, you you, know, you can just do like if you catch like if someone's recovering against you and you catch them like this, you go for a GC uh, GC dash recovery, and it'll kill very very early. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna have to. I'll go through. I'll go through it later anyway. But you get you know what I'm saying? So downlight is pretty much like a um, a move that you can use occasionally. So for example, if they're over here, it's okay to use it. But keep in mind, if you GC or anything like that, you're going, you're most likely going to get punished. And weapons with good punish game, they're just going to hit you for like 60 damage at a time. It's it's really not worth it. Um, if you have the read, go for the like GC downlight and stuff, or use downlight. And only if you have a grounded punish. But other than that, do not use this move. Um, yeah, it's just not going to be worth it. And it's pretty slow coming out. Like by the time most people have whiffed and you dash in, uh, most of the time they've jumped over it, so I wouldn't even recommend it. Uh, yeah. So, say is probably one of your best spacing tools because it keeps people at bay. You don't want to use this too much and you really need to learn the spacing of how to actually use this. Um, because using this in the wrong space can oftentimes get you severely punished again, so... Um, you know, like, if you whiff this, like, really close, they have, like, ample opportunity to hit a combo on you, especially things like Sword, where you do this once, boom, they can instantly dash in, you know, dash in and, da like, do like, say you, do like, recover you, etc., and get a ton of damage, um, especially if you're doing it, like, multiple times. Um, my idea is, if you know someone's going to approach you, a good thing to do is use the say with a dash jump, like this, like a dash jump fast fall. As it will catch like people off guard. So um, just don't use it like too much, otherwise um, you're gonna just get punished for it. So and it's mostly just a spacing tool. So okay, so Nair is strictly a juggling tool. As I said earlier, you can use the X pivots if you know that they're slightly lower lower to the ground instead of going for this, which will hit quite high up. Go for the uh, like sorry like that. 
do this to catch like low floating opponents, you know what I mean? Like not like up here level, but like somewhat like here, you know what I mean? It'll, it'll help just catch that area. Um, it can also be used if you know your opponent whiffs after jumping. So for example, I'll give you an example. Say I'm falling on top of this opponent. If you notice that he dashes away, then obviously you can follow him. But if you notice that every time you like you, you go like go into punish, he's jumping away. A good thing to do when they like whiffing attack and you know you don't have enough time to like do anything about it, do a nair. Uh it's a bit risky, but if you know they're going to jump, they will jump into the nair and I'll set this on jump. If you know like that, you can get a decent bit of damage. You know, you can get a good 30, 40, 30 to 45 damage per, per like time they're doing this. So Um, another thing you really want to keep in mind is using reverse rather than thing. And I'll, I'll give you an example of what I mean by this. So if they're standing here, for example, right, the best thing you can do is reverse nay. Because of the hitbox and the way it works, as you can see, it hits slightly behind. You have this big hitbox slightly behind you meaning it hits, and then you go to this one and it hits, it does hit in front, but most of the time, the first hit doesn't really connect, and by the time, by the time that first hit has passed the opponent, like, it, he's completely jumping out of the way for it, so doing a reverse, when they're to the right of you, or to the left of you, for example, um, is just a way better option. Uh, what else? Yeah, obviously, like I said, just using the for juggling, um, and get a lot of damage out of it. So it's specifically just four juggles. Um, also use, if the opponent's far away from you, say like all the way over here, um, like that, you can do this, if they're like all the way up here or something. And you know, you can just use the nares to the exact, like you just have really have to like play around with this move and get good at using it, so. So my recommendation for using dare, dare is like, you know, your typical get off move, it's sort of thing, like, ah, get away, you know, get away, get away from me. Um, it's pretty much all it's used for is mostly in punishes like this, for example, um, you know, stuff like that. Um, you really want to keep it as that, but it can also be used as a counter punish. So, like, uh, wait, counter punish, I'm not. Can I speak English today? Um, so say you hit a nair. Oh, I'm going to go into that later, actually. I'm not even going to go over that point, but you get my point. Uh, go for, like, dare. So specifically, if you, like, say them, you know, they're going to jump. Um, you know, I'll set them to jump reaction up. Okay, so... Give me a second. You know, if you know he's going to jump, then you can go for the dare. Or if you know he's going to double jump after he whiffs go all the way up here and do it, and stuff like that. You, you get the point, right? You just need to learn these moves. Okay, so Sidelight is like a pressury tool. Um, Sidelight can be used for a lot of setups, which I'll get into in a little bit. Um, but mainly what you want to do with Sidelight is use it out of your strings. Um, you know, you want to use it out of your strings. You want to like, use X pivots on top of it as well. Um, you know, you can use it at like side like say for example stuff like that um mainly using it as a parry option so if you know the like opponent it's really good at catching landings i've noticed so if your opponent's like flowing and he's just used all of his options and he's like floating down here it's a good little thing say you're in the middle of the stage and you're trying to follow him a good little thing is just like you know dash side light or something like that and it'll often catch them as long as you have the spacing right so mainly what it's used for um, or when the opponent, you know, is standing still, um, you know, you just go go for a quick side, uh, sorry, you quick, you know, quick side light, and it'll, it'll oftentimes catch them off guard, so, mix it up between, between those two. So, I'm going to be showing you downlight recovery, uh, in this clip. So, in this clip, I'm going to be showing you how to do download recovery. Uh, this is one of the moves that you'll need to learn for a kill confirm. Um, I'm going to specifically, in this recording, I'm going to go over it with the keyboard on so you can see this. Um, 
You can start to do that limit recovery at like 80 damage, I believe. Something like that. 70, maybe even 60, I don't know. So you can do it at 60, but there's not really much point of you doing downlight recovery at any late, like earlier than that, or earlier than like 100 damage and stuff like that. There really is like not much point at all. I'd still do it at like this level of orange. That's when I start doing it. Um, there's no point doing it at like later health than that. So yeah. Um, I'm really just going to be teaching you this now and make sure when you're learning this do this both directions always remember that Okay, so first you're gonna input a downlight um, You should know how to do that. So when you've input downlight as soon as the downlight ends you can dash jump Okay, so you're basically holding down throughout the entire thing like as you can see on the keyboard I'm holding down I'm holding the key down because you, that's what you're gonna need so as soon as the downlight ends, that's when you can input the dash jump. So, like, as you're holding down, all you have to do is just do press dash and jump at the same time. Sorry. So, once you've got that down, you've practiced it, like, both ways. Like, mul like at least 30 to 40 times, because this combo is very difficult. This might even take a few days to get, you know, consistently. But you will get there if you keep practicing this. So, I know it's... They should be dead at, I don't know, 130 damage because it's also. Um, yeah. Like, this is basically your main kill confirmed. So, when you hit the downlight, like I said, go for the dash jump, and then you input a recovery. Sometimes this does drop, but by the way. Um, this It's really sad that guns have to go through this, but sometimes you'll get to the point where the downlight will, like, weirdly drop, and then you go for the recovery, and the recovery will, like, slightly drop as well, and then stop you from getting damage or maybe not even kill as much or I, I don't know if it's the game's fault or the person's fault anymore because I see so many people doing it that it just can't be it has to be the game's fault of like not registering something not registering so certain hit properly so yeah I don't know but this is something that you really really need to get down is basically a downlight dash jump that was dash jump but that was dash jump again okay uh, and then go for the recovery. Now, when you go for the recovery, basically all, what you're doing is you stay still while holding backwards slowly. So the moment you input the recovery like this, hold, just, I'll give you an example. If I just press and let the button go, it does work, but occasionally you go too far forward. So like if you hit it, like too far forward sometimes and you accidentally like hold the key, too much it will do that so that's what you need to really be aware of of slightly hold back and what I mean by that is just press the button once I just hold it slightly after I've inputted it to keep myself steady when doing the downward recovery okay so I mean that's like your basic downward push cover tutorial I can't really like offer any more tips you know what I mean make sure to change keys if need to be if you're really really struggling but other than that you're fine uh, make sure to set the neutral thing on in the settings, uh, controls, wait, give me a second. Yeah, change controls, there you go. Um, out of jump recovery. Huh? I don't know what that is. Um, prioritize neutral of the side, always make sure to have that on, so, yeah. So this is a weird punish option that you can do. It's another form of a kill confirm, um, like downlight recovery, for example. Like downlight recovery, like I just taught you, is a kill confirm you need to learn. But this is also another kill confirm that pretty much no one uses, okay? And it's based on dodge reading, so um, you definitely need to be able to dodge read for this specific one. Uh, it's based on a dodge read, so yeah. Um, so first of all, I got 130 damage because of this the time that it's like killing for this. Um, I'm gonna change my legend here to Nyx because it'll just give me a little bit of an extra force here. So, for example, right. So for neutral dodge, what you're basically doing is you, when you hit a side light, you're gonna go for a dodge read. That's essentially what I'm gonna be doing here. Okay. So for this one, what you're doing, you're hitting the side light, dashing forward and stopping, holding back to stop your momentum. And then go for the recovery, jump recovery. Like that. One, two, three. Like that. One, two, three. Obviously, you know, like that. 
Okay, so that's how to cover neutral dodge. For up dodge, you can like, you can just immediately go into um, not that. You can immediately go for the dash jump recovery. So you need to be able to learn to do that. Sorry, Jesus. Yeah. I don't know why this is Jesus Christ, dude. My input's today really, really bad. I'm very sorry. I feel very silly now. Um, but yeah, that's how to cover up dodge. Uh, for right dodges. Jesus. I'm I I I'm sure my keyboard is broken. I've been doing this for ages, and my keyboard is like inputting random attack. Right, thank you. Everything is unjumpable, by the way. I want to make sure that's clear. Everything is just my fault that I'm inputting it wrong, so... There you go. Alright, so that's how to cover right dodges. Down dodges. Uh, left dodges. Uh, left dodges is, you basically walk... Over that. There you go. It is unjumpable, but you really need to learn these timings. I, I just haven't been on in a while, so I do apologize. Um, upright. Upright, it can be done by just... Just following them slightly. Delaying the uh, recovery moment, like the recovery period. Just delay the current recovery, recovery period. I can't even speak English today, Jesus. All right, yeah. So just do that for upright dodge. So downright is basically just... Hold forward a little bit. And go for the dash jump recovery. Down left. There you go. So up left. Uh, how did I do this? Oh yeah, for up left, basically you just, you don't even do a dash jump. You just recovery, basically. Just jump recovery. Uh, then yeah, those are all the dodgers. I'll go over them quickly again for you. And that's not what I wanted. But yeah, neutral. Up. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. Uh. Down. Sorry. Left. Um, yeah, upright. Jesus Christ. Upright. Uh, downwards, sorry. Go down left. Up left. And um, oh yeah. And then, yeah. So on so forth. So if you have a read on the dodge, you can go for another kill and confirm. So uh, it's a bit of a better option than trying to hit down light recovery. Like you have more chance of hitting a side light than you do a you know a down light at later HPs because people are looking out for it. So yeah, uh, yeah, that's all the side light punishes that most people don't use. So yeah, I, I rec really recommend learning that. It's a tech that nobody uses. So in this section, I'm going to be more or less going over the a string that you can use. Um, now this is something that you will have to learn by yourself, okay? This is something that you're gonna have to learn and you're really, really gonna have to get used to it. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna set the bot to dodge upwards. Oh, actually, I don't know, I'm just gonna set the jump. So, what I'm gonna do here is show you something. So, this is a hypothetical scenario for when you do hit it, but when you hit an end light into near, Let's just say hit you hit hit two nears, right? The best thing to do after hitting one nair is go for a second nair. Um immediately like I recommend reverse again. So So once you hit that, and then I set on low damage, okay? Sorry. One thing you can do, and you need to start learning how to do, is when you hit that double nair, 
uh, it always seems to be after a nay, is learn to follow up after it. So what I mean by this, I, I don't really have any, like a set example. If I find one, I'll put one at the end of this section, okay? So if I do find one, if I find a clip of me doing it, I'll, um, I'll show you. So, um, but you'll see what I mean with the nays. If you hit a double nay, I'm gonna get him to react, so I guess like I'll just I'll just get him to stand a minute and then jump reaction up. Okay. So like if you hit the double nay, essentially what you do is you follow their movement. Okay? So say I hit the double nay. Sorry for that thing in the background by the way. Um if I hit a double nay and they go for the right, you wait for them to come past you, like to on your level, and you go for the, you know, the uh, the downlight uh, recovery. Um, it's a really good method to kill like really early. Um, you'd be very very surprised on how like early this kills. Um, yeah, you know. So essentially, that's all you're doing. It's a really good little tech. Uh, you basically just follow their movement. You can go for the ser if you want to, like if you just want to just go do a simple ser. Um, Go for a further uh, near and just follow, like, learn to really, really, like, focus on, like, their movement at that point. As soon as you hit them with a the double near, so. That's just a brief example, but, you know, if I find an in-game example, I'll show you later on. But you, you see my point, right? I don't need to, I'm going on a little bit, I know. In this video, I've been ranting. A little bit too much, over explaining my point, but I want to just really set it in for you, you know what I mean, so. Okay, so this is the best example of something that I found. Uh, I found this game against Julian, I was sparring him. He was using a Greatsword Legend, but uh, this is just a brief example, right? Um, you know, so I hit, I wait for the nays, you know. So, I thought he was going to dodge up, to be honest. Wait for him to jump, as you can see. I, I see that he dodges left, and I go in for the kill. Um, this is what I mean by reading out of the thing. It's extremely useful and works more commonly. Okay. See, uh, you try following the movement. No, it's there. Okay. Go over there. Go over there. Alright. So I wait for him to do... I do the nair. And then I see him go slightly right, but I try to cover the nair, right? I thought he was going to drop down a bit further. But as you can see, I was slightly off. So I was like, shit, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, and then with this, obviously, there he is. Obviously, I don't think he has a dodge at this point. Oh yeah, he doesn't, yeah, but he, well, he doesn't, he decides not to dodge. He decides not to dodge at this point. So what I do, what I do is just simply, near. I notice that he jumps up. I jump up to follow his slight movement. I see the dodge, as soon as I see the dodge, Boom, I instantly down light. And there you go. Go. I don't know why you did a near, by the way. Like, I don't know why you did he doing a near there. I, I don't know why, but yeah. Um, maybe that was a misinput for him. But there you go. And then you just go into that, and that kills really early. As you can see, I mean, it's decently late for when I'm hitting it. But you can see how, like, early that's technically killing. Like, but before I hit the down light, that's decent, like, orange, right? That's just, yeah, you know. But off the top, that's gonna definitely gonna kill you, know what I mean? So... It's extremely useful to catch people off stage, so use Nair for a juggling tool. Um, it's just insanely useful and can grant you a lot of kills, okay? So I just wanted to go over that brief example. So, so bad matchups for this weapon is something that you really, really want to know. I've already explained it in my legend options sort of section, but I really want to drive the home, like drive home to sword being extremely strong against guns. Like, it, it's very difficult for guns to do very much. Same with guitars. Lance is a little bit of a pain too, you know, I will admit that. Uh, cannon can sometimes be a pain in the ass if they're too close. Guns do struggle with a lot of matchups, it just depends on how good you are at spacing with your says and keeping your distance from the opponent. You need to really, really get good. Uh, guitars are the most deadly thing that you can ever verse against, in my opinion, for guns. Because of everything being so quick and unpunishable, you have to learn how to play against them because that you know panicking and doing like random says and things will get you 
very punished quickly with katars. Like with sword, you know, at least you have a chance to double dare or like say them out of the way. With katars, they're just constantly on you and they're unpunishable. So yeah, I think katars are like the most deadly thing that a guns player can burst. Um, just keep this in mind, okay? Just keep these bad matchups in mind. That I think Scythe is also like a really bad matchup for guns. Um, guns could really do with something, like a little bit, a little bit of something, you know, to help with these matchups because it, it is a struggle. Okay, then up. Down. Left. Right. There we go. That's down right. Down left. So this part's how to cover pretty much every single dodge out of dash jump, uh, sorry yeah, like down like dash jump there. So yeah, let's get into it. Neutral. Yeah, dodge read punishes mostly, so yeah. Up. You know, at the end there, obviously after the nares, you read their movement like I've previously discussed. There you go. Down. Left. Upright. Punishes out of downlight. Uh, this is every dodge read punish out of um, uh, end light. Sorry. down. There you go, that's uh, left. It's upright. It's down right. Uh, down left. You know, like I was talking about earlier, you can do that sort of stuff, read the movement, and then there you go. So this is pretty much, um, this is every door to read out of say, at, you know, relatively low damage, right? So, you know, neutral. And then you have up. Sorry. You know, uh, then you have right, etc. Then you have down. Uh, then you have left. Yeah, I missed, but you get the point. Uh, so for that, all you can do, uh, you know, GC, downline, and stuff. 
Uh, there you go. Oops, sorry. Just put that off down left. And then up left. Uh, and then there you go. That's every punish. I don't have many tips for edge guarding. Okay, like I will be real with you. There's not much that guns is really good off stage, but I'll give you a few general pointers of what you need to do off stage against guns. Um, return to on stage back as quick as possible. Like I mean, like as best as you can. Don't stay off stage with guns for too long because it's not going to get you very far. Um, so if you push them off stage, as an example, then yeah, wait, like. Match their jump height, and then obviously you can sail, do stuff like that. Um, other than that, if you're off stage, make sure to um, make sure to stay at a distance and use nares to cover yourself. Um, otherwise, you're kind of screwed. You know, you're kind of screwed with guns. Um, if you stay off stage for too long, so just if they're about to like ground pound you, you use your near because this thing will out prioritize everything in the game, so you're fine. Um, if you if you're using it right anyway. Also, it reaches like a little bit on stage too, which is nice. So yeah, make sure to keep that in mind. Um, another edge guarding little technique is dash dash, uh, sorry dash dash ground pound. Um, it can be done by staying like this far away from the ledge, and then. It's sort of like a grounded ground pound. Uh, I think there's a tutorial for this somewhere. I'm not going to go into it, but basically, essentially, what you're doing is you dash, dash back, dash forward near the ledge like that, and then you get this when you put a, a ground pound after it like that. It's good because people sat on the stage by here won't really like expect it, so you can sit right here like that. Sorry, uh, of course the ice cream line comes around when I'm trying to record, but you get the point. Yeah, so for example, the, this hitbox is really, really good. And I'll, uh, I'll show you what it is. As you can see, this hitbox is really good because it'll hit like somewhat below the stage, which is really, really nice. So when it goes in, when it does land, it's really good. It's really good for ca catching people, like, maybe even just coming back to the stage really quickly, like that, you know what I mean, that, that'll hit them. Uh, I know it's a weird hitbox, don't get me wrong, but still. Um, you know, Day is a really good tool off stage, if you can get it, like, if you can uh, follow their movement and, like, get them with a near, and then make sure to, make sure you have the kill confirm. You know, if they're, like, just getting back to stage and all they have is a dodge, make sure to wait for them. You know, and uh, be careful with how you use the ground pound off stage because it's very slow. So, uh, general edge guarding as well is like you know use side light to space yourself. Use like grounded stairs and stuff. Uh, a, a good thing to do is wait for them to come back on stage. Like literally, just sit there most of the time. Most of the time, they won't do anything. Come back on stage or try to attack you. They'll try going on stage without attacking you. So wait for the, them to either like dodge in or dodge up, and then obviously go for the like this. So like they'll be on the stage, and then they'll like do this, and they'll try getting over you, right? That's the two options that they have when they're getting back to the stage. Like it's just go over you, or like fully through you. That's the only option they have, and you need to just start reading that. Um, other than that, there's not really much to um, actually like give you. Uh, because guns aren't really an off-stage weapon, so yeah, you can get good with them off-stage, but you know, like any weapon, but I just don't recommend it. So anyway, uh, that's it for this section. I shall see you in the next one. So in this section, I'm sort of going to go over something you need to know in using certain signatures, like Isaiah Blaster Nsig and Reno Nsig, that cover the weaknesses of guns. So make sure to use this to your full advantage. Like, um, you know, it, it really is going to be helpful to you because guns can struggle at like that 45 degree angle. Um, so gun, like the mo some characters say is are really, really good with dealing with that. So, I mean, it's just a, a small section, but, you know, just make sure to try and 
try and capitalize on using those SIGs um, to cover the weaknesses because a lot of people like stay in this area of guns and punish them. Um, so yeah, use that to your advantage. So I'm playing guns. This is like pretty much the final section. Uh, when playing guns, like just make sure to um, just make sure to not be discouraged when playing the weapon. The guns are probably like the most time that you'll ever like spending uh, that you'll ever spend trying to learn like a specific weapon. The, the weapon is very difficult. Everyone's different. Everyone learns at different paces. So if you're struggling with guns, then don't be discouraged. Just keep trying. Focus on the points of where you're going wrong. Um, do your reappeals, you know, that's a classic old method of uh, improving. You know, just make sure to um, aim to improve, you know. You can get frustrated at times that you're not improving, but honestly, um, things really do take time. This can even take months for you, you know. So, so just don't be discouraged, that's all. Guns are a very difficult weapon, and uh, if you don't get good with them, then it's fine. You know what I mean? Pick a different weapon if you really... If you really can't, you know, if you're really feeling bad about not being able to do it, then pick a different weapon. Pick something maybe a bit easier for you, or something a bit more on your level. Because guns, I honestly say that you should play every other weapon before learning guns. Although guns are very good for beginners in a way, because they teach you uh, space. They teach you spacing, um, which is why guns are like probably one of like the best weapons to um, learn with. At the start, yeah, it's really difficult, but you'll probably learn way quicker because you'll understand spacing and spatial awareness a lot better. And uh, you need to play sort of way more reactively. Other than like, of, I mean, every weapon plays like that. But you understand what I'm saying, right? Anyway, um, other than that, yeah, just don't be discouraged. Keep playing. Keep trying. Keep trying to do better. And if you're not doing better, then watch more guides or go over the stuff that you're struggling with. It, sh it should really help you. Okay, so anyway, I've done enough talking, I've done enough ranting. This is a, it's been a long blast, this guide, so yeah.